Hello everyone, once again we have another new Friday product post. So we've got even more products and a couple different things this week, so let's see what we've got. So we've got a new GPS module this week, and it is not the 406 as you see here, it is this. This is the GP2106, and this is a really tiny GPS module, as you can see. This is based on the Surf 4 chipset and is a 40 channel GPS module, and this is a great way to embed GPS in a lot of really small applications. Now it does have this proprietary ribbon connector on it. We will have the ribbon cables coming in very soon and we are working on a breakout board for this, but if you want to try your hand at it, you can get these ribbon cables out there on the internet and go ahead and start testing it out. So last week we were talking about stepper motors, servo motors, and all sorts of other things. And what I have in here is a continuation on that discussion. It's not going to be as lengthy as the last discussion, but here's something that you can definitely use. This is a quadrature encoder. So remember how I was talking about motors and how they need some sort of feedback system to know where they are and how you know, many turns they've turned? Well, this is exactly that. This is an encoder. And the way it works is when this dial spins, it outputs signals on these pins to tell it how many steps it's turned. This particular encoder is 200 pulses per rotation. So it's essentially like a stepper motor and you get 200 steps per revolution. The way this works is, think of an optical encoder. You have this wheel, right? An optical encoder that is slats of white and black, kind of like what we saw last week. When it transitions from the white to black, you get a signal. Well, this is a lot like that, except for it has, let's say, two of those offset. So if you start high on one and then transition to low on the other, then you're going this way. If you start low and then transition high, you're going this way. So it basically uses these offset pulses to determine whether you're moving forward or backwards. And then you can use that to track the number of steps you're moving. So you can usually use this on the end of a motor to tell how many steps forward you've gone or how many steps backwards. So this is very similar to the other encoder that we have, except for this is a full quadrature encoder, which can tell you forward and backward. So check this out. So you may be wondering just exactly what I have in front of me. And this is one of those interesting products that some people might wonder, what is this and why are we carrying it? Well, this is a pH sensor kit. Not only do we have these solutions, but we also have a pH probe, a BNC connector for the probe, and this board, which I'll explain later. So let's say you're building, I don't know, a hydroponics project, and you want to precisely control the pH level of your water, of your nutrients. Uh, let's say you're making an automatic um, pool chemical dispenser, and you want to test the pH level of your pool and automatically adjust the chemicals. There's a lot of different reasons why you'd want to not only test for pH, but also to you know, be able to know exactly what your pH is and then use another system to adjust it. And this kit will allow you to do exactly that. Um, let me explain this board. This board right here is this tiny little, um, they call it the pH stamp. And it's a great little board that can plug into a breadboard or you can embed it into something else. And all it does is allow you to read off the pH probe. It spits out a serial command set, and it's really easy to understand. There's even Arduino example code on the website. So you use this board to just simply read what comes off the probe. And we also give you this B and C connector, so you can easily plug into the end of the probe. In addition to the probe itself and the electronics, we also have these four solutions. Because the probe is going to vary, and you know there's a lot of variables here, these solutions are used to calibrate the probe so you can get an exact pH reading. We've got a storage solution, and then we've got a pH 10, a pH 7, and a pH 4. So what you would actually do is you would fill this vial down here at the end with different solutions, and you would actually calibrate your system based on these solutions. And then when you're done and you're not using the probe, you actually use the storage solution in the end of this vial to store the whole system. So, Obviously, if you're looking to do anything with plants or anything with, you know, specific pH, you might want to check out this pH sensor kit. So there you have it, our products for this week. We've got the pH kit, we've got the really tiny GPS, and we've also got this quadrature encoder. So check out the products and check out the whole rest of the product post, and we'll see you again next week.